Hello and welcome to the Limo Profit Show. I'm Ed Stapleton and today's guest is Arthur Messina. Arthur, how are you? I'm doing great, Ed. Excellent, excellent. So let's just get right into the interview. Let's talk about how you got your start in the interview. You've been around for almost 30 years, so take us back to the beginning. Um, 1985 it goes back to, and I was looking for a way to get out of working a job in corporate America. I started, I graduated with a food and business degree and worked for the Marriott Corporation. I ended up working many hours and underpaid, and I realized that this was not going to work early on in life. And I decided that I, I had a hobby of photography, and I wanted to try to find a business that I can do something with that, and came up with the concept of photo business cards. There was a couple of, I, I actually did some reading in Entrepreneur Magazine back then, saw a couple of franchise companies that were doing this, got some information, um, realized I did not need to purchase a franchise, and I basically went out and sought after how to do this. And I started off with, you know, a company called Creator Card, and I thought that's what it was going to be, building photo business cards for the next couple of years or many years, but now 27 years later, um, I make business cards, trade show booths, marketing kits, promo items, and it really turned into something much more than just a business card. Well, that's interesting. And did you focus in on directly right out of the gate in on the limousine businesses, or is that something that just kind of happened and evolved? Actually, I did. There was a gentleman, um, my very first customer, actually gave away free cards. Uh, he became a customer after he got his first free set, but his his company was Richard James Limousine in Merrick, New York, out on Long Island. And he had a couple of vehicles. At that time, they were Cadillacs. And he had a couple of vehicles at a gas station where he had a limousine service. And I asked him if there was a possibility of me borrowing his car to take some photos of it. Because I was looking at, you know, somebody who purchases a high-end vehicle. At that time, they were spending $50,000 plus for a stretch limousine, and they need a avenue in order to market it. And if they're spending $50,000 just on a product, you know that they need a way to get that information and get that visual aspect out to the public. Uh, back in 1985, very, very few people had any images. So I asked this gentleman, Jim Ficarra, and I said, would you mind if we take the car up to the park and snap a couple of photos? And he was very much open into it. It was very nice. He, he gave me the opportunity. We took some photos, and we, I ended up creating the first photo card for him for Richard James Limousine with a beautiful picture of a white Cadillac on the front, some type on the front of the card. And next thing you know, you know that, that was the start of a creator card. That's great. I love hearing the, the start of different businesses. It's so it's exciting. So you've been in the industry for such a long time. What are some traits you've noticed that lets operators stand the test of time? I'm going to say, you know, consistently marketing. Um, I heard this in one of the other episodes that you had, and it's, it's, it's a great point. Consistently marketing your business from the start of the business in good times and in bad times. Very, very strong thing to think about is whether you're busy and you say, hey, I don't need to market myself. That's wrong. You have to market yourself whether it's strong or slow. So therefore, when you do hit those slow periods, people are constantly seeing your brand and your information out there. I'm also looking at, you know, some key things that people need to do is attend association meetings, attend trade shows. They need to be visible. In order for them to get any notice of themselves or their business, you need to be out there in the public's eye. Gotcha. That, that, you actually stole my next question about attending yeah. um, industry events and networking events. I think it was the first time I met you is that I think it was uh, either a Limo Digest or an LCT magazine show. Can you give me some advice for a small operator that's attending a show for the first time or maybe a second time, how to approach a larger operator or just how to meet people and network at a show like that? I have a great um, example of that. I have a close friend, Douglas Schwartz. And five years ago, Douglas called me on the phone. He has executive limousine service in Belmore, New York, right on Long Island. Some people may know him now, but the, you know, five years ago, they didn't know who Douglas Schwartz was. And Doug called me up on the phone one day, and he says, I need to double my business. How do I do it? I want to be like JetBlue. JetBlue, I want, to, I want to be out there. I want to be aggressive. I want to make money. How do I do it? And I told him, you know, part of what you need to do is you need to come out. Come out of your shell. Come out of your cocoon and make yourself visible. Attend associations. He ended up being an association president. He got involved in his local association. He ended up becoming president, which means he went to the president's meeting with the NLA. He ended up doing other association uh, meetings, such as New Jersey, New England, so he got himself further out. 
He attended the shows on the East Coast and the West Coast. And then he started something even better is he started doing videos. And he got his videos out. And he would go up to key guys in the industry. And while somebody, while he was at a show, he would have someone take a little video of him while talking and say, hey, my name is Doug Schwartz. I'm from an executive limousine in Long Island. And here I am with Dawson Rutter or Scott Salambrino or whoever it was. And he'd have a quick three to five minute conversation. And he posted it and sent it out to his list. Within a couple of years, people know who Douglas Schwartz are. Hopefully, if I mention the name, you know who Doug Schwartz is? Absolutely. And I've watched all of his videos. <laughs> yeah. And he did that by the means of making himself visible. So any small guy, any small operator, one car, two car, is, you know, get out there, make yourself, you got, you know, you only get what you give. So you need to get involved in the association. Just going to the association meeting and sitting there in the chair and being to yourself doesn't help. Get yourself involved. Get yourself in the committee. Another great example is doesn't matter what size operator you are, you go to a trade show and meet someone like George Jacobs. He will stop. He will shake your hand. He will give you the time of day. He will answer your questions. The bigger operators that have been successful want to give back. So it's a great opportunity that if you see somebody in the magazine and you want to get out to them, Reach out there, introduce yourself, shake your hand, give them a card. Just tell them, it, you know, I see in the magazines, It's I just wanted to say hello, and maybe next time we can get together or maybe next time we can have a conversation together. It costs you nothing to to make that connection, but you got to get out and get involved. Association meetings, the trade shows are very important parts of getting yourself out there. That's great. And for a small amount size operator that doesn't know, can you tell a little bit about who George Jacobs is and what he's done for the industry? George Jacobs is my idol. I mean, I, I tell him this every <laughs> single – and I say that so truthfully. I tell him every single time, and, you know, I'm not in this business, but if I was in this business, I'd want to know who George Jacob is. George Jacob is a – He's a rainmaker. He makes things happen. Um, some people have that touch, and George has been in this business. He, he sold this business for a good chunk of money, and he got out of it for almost five years. And for whatever reason, he missed it. He loves the industry. He loves the people, and he got back in. And within a couple of years of coming back into his company in Chicago, Windy City, he's one of the top operators in that city. He does work with a lot of sports teams, the Chicago White Sox, the Cubs, the, the Bulls. I mean, he runs and gets himself, and he's done that through you know, relationships through exposure. Um, he's unique. When he goes to a, a Chicago White Sox game, he wears this bright yellow M&M jacket, and he sits right behind home plate. He invested <laughs> in those seats, those first two seats, and he makes himself known that the, the advertisers talk to him, the players talk to him, and he constantly gets his name, Windy City, out there. He understands what it takes to build relationships, and he understands what it's like to get out there and get exposure and meet people. That's great. So why don't we talk a little bit more about building relationships and why it's so important, especially in this industry where there's so much farm and farm out work and just so much mentorship that goes on in this industry. So why don't you talk about relationships and, and, and how important they are for our industry? As I said before, probably the most important thing of business is building good relationships. I built an entire business, a 27-year business on relationships. People can go online these days and buy printing. People can go online and get their marketing done. But, you know, it's a matter of do you want to just send it online and place an order or do you want to get some feedback from someone you can speak with or a company that you feel comfortable with? And that's kind of what I did. You know, building people like to do business with people that they like. And if you're likable, they don't mind doing work business with you. They want to come to you. People, you know, it's the same thing of the Home Depots and the Lowe's and the local True Value hardware store. People prefer to go locally and speak with Frank and have Frank explain how to fix something. It's the same thing here. If they come for a business card or, you know, I had a customer today he asked me, you know, w it's time to renew our Yellow Page ad, ad and what should I do? All I know is that if they're trying to make their commission, they're trying to sell me, what should I do? Maybe you can help me. And that's something I'll pick up the phone and I will tell them. I'm going to give them a suggestion of what to do because they trust our relationship together of the work that we've done together and they trust my expertise and the opinion. So therefore they, they like to, you know, you can't get that on online. You can't get that at, you know, paying a discount rate or, you know, somebody that's, that doesn't have the time for you. That's the thing about building relationships and it's key in the limo business as well. Everybody has 
a car with four wheels. Everyone has a shiny car. Everybody will take you from A to B. Why choose your limousine service over somebody else's? Or why take a town car versus taking a cab? And the thing is, if they know the owner or they know the company and they built relationships with them, they're going to want to do work with them. So I find it's very important to go out there, work on those relationships, spend the time, spend the effort. An owner, a upper management, affiliate manager, you got to get out there and you got to make those connections and you got to have that time to build up the relationship with the others so that when there's a need for them to do business, they call you. That's great. So within the last year or so, you recently started another business called Driving Results. So why don't you tell me a little bit about what that is and uh, what you're doing for operators? Driving Results came about a need for somebody who has the expertise in the industries to help people within the industry. I have a partner that I'm involved with, uh, Lenore Danzeri, who is out there doing some private consulting. And her and I actually met at one of the trade shows, and she says, Art, I'm overwhelmed. I'm not going to be successful if I don't get some help, and maybe we should sit down and talk. And I thought that was quite interesting because I was at the point for the last three to five years prior to this, you know, customers keep coming up and saying, Art, why don't you do some consulting? You know so much about this industry. It's like you own a transportation company. Why don't you start doing something and going in and help companies build? And the two of us actually, you know, sat down at um, at the trade show or the restaurant. We spoke. Uh, we met thereafter, and next thing you know, we ended up with a company called Driving Results. Now, Driving Results is a consulting company for the ground and travel transportation. Lenore comes with a tremendous background of working for the airlines, working with meeting planners. So she brings the other end of the spectrum into this industry. I have the experience of the ground transportation, the marketing, and the connections of working with people. So we really, you know, cover a wide selection of areas um, to help people when it comes to consulting. So driving results does private consulting for companies. And then what we also did is for those that can't afford bringing in a private consultant, we have learning and development groups. And what those are is those are a larger number of companies, meaning um, anywhere from 10 to 14 companies in a group that meet four times a year um, over a three-day period in different locations. And we bring guest speakers in. We educate them on customer service, human resources, uh, you name it. Whatever the topic of importance is, we'll bring speakers in and we'll start educating the group. We do roundtable discussions. And that we've been doing now for over a year with much success. Gotcha. And prior to the the call, we spoke offline about your roundtables and the importance of masterminding and working uh, in a in a cooperative environment with non-competitive peers. Can you talk a little bit about the importance of of masterminding? You know what it can really do to elevate your level of success. Probably one of our best sections in our groups over these three days is what we call our roundtable discussions. They're the most popular. The last one that we had um, in our group called Spinning Wheels was the talk about show for pay. And one person had, you know, do I do tip credit? The other person says, do I do straight salary? And what was going to be a 30-minute conversation turned into two and a half hours. We had operators getting up using the, um, the visual um, board of writing down numbers, showing examples. And this thing went on and on. It had a life of its own because here you have 12 different owners in a room talking about a subject that's very important to them that they really can't talk to anyone else. Anyone locally, you're never going to be talking about show for pay. You know, you can't go down the block and talk to your competitor and say, hey, I'm paying $7 an hour, I'm paying $10 an hour, and try to have an open conversation because he's your competitor. And if he knows what you're paying, he'll pay $5 more or $2 more and maybe grab those people away from you. So now you have non-competition within a group to have discussions and it's 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 phenomenal. I mean, Ed, I can't explain to you how how effective it is for the owners that when they walk away, they're like, "Oh my God, this was great." You know, I mean, I've been looking at it this way. I just had the Department of Labor come in. They told me I have to do it this way. Now you're telling me something different. Or the person who just went through a Department of Labor audit now is able to explain to the group, "This is what they did." told me this is what happened in my group and therefore this is how we're now approaching you know pay and this is just one subject this comes up with customer service this comes up with dispatches this comes up with driver training but you 
to have the opportunity to speak with others of your peers in a group openly with not worrying about somebody taking what you say and doing something with it because they're competition. That's the reason that our groups are non-competitive. If you take um, Dallas, Texas, there's nobody else in there except Dallas, Texas. If you're San Francisco, there's nobody within 300-mile radius that's going to be in that group from that part of California, which is really nice. So everybody can be 100% open and honest with everybody else in the group. Very nice. And tell me a bit more about, I think you said it was called Going Global when we spoke uh, offline. Tell me a bit about that, and that's for specifically for affiliate managers, right? Yeah, Going Global is really exciting. Um, we just kicked that um, the registration off two weeks ago, and we're closing that up on this week, in fact. And what we did is we're going to have 20 different companies in a group, similar to the other groups, but what we're doing now is instead of it for being for the owner, we're doing it for the affiliate managers. And the reason we're doing this is because people need to learn how to grow their affiliate business, their inbound business, their outbound business, how to make their affiliate program, or we call it a partner program, stronger, better, how to go back and talk to your reservationists about booking additional trips. So they need to understand that, you know, when the phone rings and someone's going to the airport, that means there's three other trips. If you're picking up Mr. Jones at his house, Take him to the airport. Of course, we know Mr. Jones has to come back from the airport to his house. There's two trips, but Mr. Jones is traveling somewhere else. How about booking that business and turning that two trips into four trips and then learning how to farm that work out to other companies, but how to do it properly, what to look for, what these other companies are looking for. So now what we did is we have, um, we'll have 20 companies from nationwide and international meeting together three times a year uh, for two days at a time. So it's a shorter period of time and one less visit per year because we don't want their affiliate managers out of the office that much. We understand the demands on them and the importance, but we also understand the importance of them building a better program. And we have companies um, that are sized from, say, a million in sales to 20 million in sales. So we have small to large companies. And again, what that does is it gives each of the affiliate managers to learn from each other. Very few of them have had the opportunity, other than maybe a show, to meet the other affiliate managers they're doing work with. So this goes back to building a relationship. If XYZ affiliate manager gets to spend more time with ABC affiliate manager, especially three times a year, possibly once or twice more at the show, now they met each other. They, they've got a chance to, to spend time with each other minimum three to five times for that year. That relationship's going to grow just based on that. And that will give a return on investment for the owners putting them in this group, but it also gives them the opportunity to better their affiliate program. What we're also doing is at each location in the different cities, we're going to do a site visit. The same thing that many affiliate managers, they've only worked in their location. We're going to give them an opportunity to see how other locations are, what their facility is like, and how their affiliate program works in that facility, which is really good. So we're excited about that. This is our first group, um, 20 companies. We're going to start off in May, and then we're going to go into August, and then one more time in December. And um, we're looking to grow that. If we get the response, we'll open up a second group and then go from there. That's great. I love masterminding and being able to, to chat and benchmark and set best practices with peers. And, you know, to speak frankly, being an entrepreneur can be a, a lonely thing for somebody. You know, most of the general public doesn't understand us. And, you know, a lot of times locally you're in a competitive environment. So I think it's a really great opportunity for business owners, for limousine owners to get out and actually meet and interact and kind of share the burden and, and build some camaraderie with people in the industry. You know, there's there's no school that you can go to. There There isn't a college program that, you know, a student says, hey, I want to go into the transportation business and you, you're a transportation <laughs> major. It just doesn't right. happen. Um, you can go to trade shows and get bits and pieces of stuff, but also what happens at trade shows is most of the stuff, as we call it, is vanilla. Um, it's basic information. People are afraid to give away their information at trade shows. Even the speakers at the seminars, you know, maybe hold back a little bit, keep it a little closer to their chest because their competitive could be in the room. So, yes, they're giving away some some information, but they're keeping it generic for the most part. When you get involved in a group, whether it's our group or other groups that are going on, you have that honesty. You have that 100% of shut the door and let's open up our feelings. Let's tell people what it's about. Let's make each other person in this room better based on the knowledge that we share with each other. 
Gotcha. And are you making members sign non disclosure agreements? Yes, 100%. That's the only okay. way that they get into the group. Okay. All right. So let's shift gears a little bit here and let's talk about a new operator, someone just getting into the business. What advice would you have for them? I think it goes back to a little of what we said. Um, new operator, number one, start off with getting yourself with some um, a business card. The business card is the first thing you're going to do. Every person you speak with, and you want to create something that's going to have an impression on people that you hand this card out to. So besides getting, you saying you're going to get your first car, whether it's a town car, an SUV, a stretch limo, a bus, van, whatever it's going to be, you know, once they know their target audience, you need to market and attract to that audience. But the first way you're going to do that is get out there and network, get out there and start creating relationships. So I think the business card is the simplest thing and the most important thing that you want to start with, but you want to have it set up so that you impress those that you hand out the cards to. Um, I've had a friend um, in the industry, Bill Faith, a lot of people know the name, and when he was in the transportation business, he found a card, a clear card, and it was different than everybody else, and that was his calling card that set him apart from everyone else. It didn't matter whether he had one card or a 100 cards, people remembered him because of his business card. And that's important, and people are doing that these days. They're changing the shapes of the cards, maybe making it into a circle. Uh, we have a company that we did an oval card for. We're now doing cards with spot UV and with foil. Whatever it takes so that people remember you and say, ooh, nice business card. This is great. And then they look at it. They actually do. They look at it and they say, can I keep it? Now you got someone's attention. They hold on to that. That's the first thing a small operator can do. The second thing they need to do is decide, once they have their target audience, is go to where those people are. Get involved. I'm a great example of that myself as far as I chose a niche market of transportation for Creative Card. Creative Card is a marketing and printing company that does work for other industries, but 90% of what I do is in this ground transportation industry. I do some restaurants, I do some uh, DJs, I do some floral people, a couple of real, estates, real estates, but 90% of what I do is in the ground transportation industry. I found the best way for me to get involved is to get involved in the industry. Go to the shows that the industry people go to. Get involved in their associations. I became a board member of the National Limousine Association. I wanted to be part of this industry. I want people to think about when they need something for marketing, they want a guy who knows about their industry, and they can come to me for questions, answers, and the advice that will make their business better. A small operator needs to do the same thing. So if you're working with travel planners, go where the travel planners are. Go to their trade shows. Get involved in their industries. Get involved in their associations. Let them know that you're a part of that industry. That's the best way to get yourself noticed being a smaller operator. And I think as a small operator, most people just take work that comes into them. Can you talk about it? And, and you did this in your business. And I think a lot of the people in your groups that are really successful do this as well. But can you talk about the importance of niching down and picking a target market for your limousine business? Say, for example... If you want to be a retail party, prom, weddings, things like that, or if you want to be a corporate type of limousine business, can you talk about the importance of niching down? Yep, I think it's key because a lot of people want to see you specific to something. You, It's hard to be something for everybody. You'd rather be you know, specific to that group. So if you're a wedding operator and you're dealing with an antique vehicle, a stretch SUV, uh, the limos, your corporate market probably doesn't want to be in those vehicles. And if you're dealing with corporate cars and you have a black SUV, a black, you know, stretch in town cars, pretty much probably the bride or the night on the town group doesn't want to be in those cars because they're not flashy enough. You need to know your target audience. Once you get that target audience, then you really need to be specific for that audience so they see that you're a player in their market. If you go to a wedding show, you want to have that Rolls Royce on display. Your literature should talk about wedding. It should have pictures of brides and grooms. It should talk about the the pickup beforehand, the, the group transfers back and forth. After the reception drop-off, they don't want to know that you're a worldwide service and when they're looking for a wedding company. They're not concerned about that. They want to know that you're local, you're in the market, and you have the right vehicle for them. And then it works opposite if you go into the corporate market. If you're selling corporate service and worldwide service, the last thing they want to see is a, is a white limo or a stretch SUV Hummer in your literature. You need to be specific for that market to best get everything you can from that market coming back to you. 
So I think it's really important that, you know, knowing your target audience and then attracting to that market um, the best you can. A lot of companies do both, and there's nothing wrong with that. But what they'll do is they'll separate their literature. They'll separate the website to a portal that goes to social and wedding, and then they'll have another portal that will go to corporate and worldwide travel, which is okay, so that they understand that these vehicles are for this type of business, and then we have other vehicles to cover the other type of business that we service. Yeah, I 100% agree. It's very important to have a message to market match. So one more question, and then we'll wrap things up. What are some cool tips or tricks or strategies or anything like that that you're using today or you're seeing other operators use? Just give us something cool. What do you think? I think brand brand yourself is, is so important. Brand yourself to be the best that you can be. You know, I always tell people, and this is something that's so important, is people look at the owner, they look at the management. So the time you step out your door, you represent your brand and your company. If you're running out the door in a pair of shorts and a T-shirt, that's the image that you're presenting to all those that you want to cross. Remember, you're the, you're the transportation guy. You might be the limo guy. You might be the transportation guy. You're the ground transportation expert. But people look at you and form opinions. And it makes a big difference. And, Ed, you, you've walked the trade show floor many times, and you see people that look real sharp in their suits. And then you see people, as we used to say, it used to be the satin jacket look. Who do you want oh, yeah. to do business with? That that image says so much about what your company is, and that brings over now even into the social you know social media, um, the Facebook, the Twitter, the LinkedIn. What are you actually posting on your on your own personal Facebook? What type of pictures are you putting up on Pinterest or or Twitter? Are you showing that you're out there and having you know ten shots with your buddies? Are you out there you know swinging around a pole, whether it's a guy or a girl? That image represents you once again. So it's really important to think about when you step out the door, who do you represent? Because you're the owner of the company, and the owner of the company is you, and it's built it's built all around you. And I, I have great examples of that. Um, another good client of ours, um, Maurice Brewster from Mosaic out in San Francisco. The gentleman you will always see at a show dressed up to the nines. He represents himself when he's at the trade show looking sharp all the time. And to me, that carries over into your business. And then there's others that you see that will come through a trade show, you know, pushing a carriage in a pair of shorts and a T-shirt, you know, and you look at them and you're like, really? You know, what are you, what are you thinking about? You're here at a business show. Um, so to me, I think, you know, what's important, I don't, I don't want to say it's a cool trick or even a, a, a tool, but maybe it's more of a tool is think about yourself. Think about what image you want to present and always present that every time you step out your door at home or you step out your door at the office because you're in the public eye. And if people see you at a restaurant being really sloppy or people see you in places that you shouldn't be or you post something, it represents your company. And therefore, you know what? It's really easy for them to say, I'm not, that's not the type of company I want to do work with. I, I prefer somebody who has the same standards as me. Therefore, I'm going to look for somebody else. You don't want to put yourself out of the game. So it's always important. Um, the most important tool is is always represent yourself in the best way you can so that you can always help your business and always help your brand. That's great advice. So, Arthur, if people want to reach out and have a conversation with you about, let's say, some marketing for your company, would they contact you through Credit Card? Yes, that would probably be the best way. And, you know, we have plenty of domain names easy enough to do. Limo Cards, LimoMarketing.com, LimoCards.com. Limo postcards, I mean, I can go on, you know, Create a Card Inc. is the company. You know, so if they want to find this on the web, it's createacardinc.com. Also, I have 800-753-6867. That's the right. easiest way. If you need any help on any marketing, if you have a question, you need advice, if you were a customer from a previous company, we've taken over a couple of companies over the last couple of years. You know, I want to say, you know, being the best isn't always the best. It's It's being good at what you do. Um, it's not about being the top dog. I feel that we, we as a company, and I always say we because it's, it's, it's about the other employees. It's about my staff. You know, Mariana Brills has been with me 15 years. People know her. Um, they see her at the trade show. My artist has been with us 10 years. It's, it's a small family, but we, we represent a lot of companies, and we're out there, and we just try to put our best foot forward to help everybody, you know, and make them look as good as we can. That's great. And if people want to find out more about driving results and the different groups that you guys offer, where should they go? 
Yes, we have another website, and that's drivingresults.org. Uh, unfortunately, we're not a dot com, and I'm always, you know, because we're an organization, we're in dot org, so it's drivingresults.org. Any information about any of our private consulting is on there, or if you want any information about our learning and development groups, uh, just click on the education page. There's digital brochures that you can download. It will tell you about the facilitators, the mission, what's involved in the group, what the course are involved in the group, and then you can always call to see if there's an opening in your area as we're constantly adding members to the groups. That's great. Well, thank you very much for coming on the show, Arthur. I appreciate it. I think you provided some great value and some great marketing insight for an operator really at any level of their business. Ed, it's been a pleasure. I appreciate what you're doing here. I think you're doing a great job of getting the word out. You're bringing in some good people in the industry. And, you know, this is advice. I mean, whether it's my segment or one of the previous segments, you know, people should really go back and listen to all of them. All you need to do is take one nugget from each different section that you're listening to to help your business. It's like going to a seminar. If you can take one thing back with you, the seminar was a success. So, again, thank you for um, bringing this to the industry. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you, Ed. Bye now.